and I just realized how at home you kind of are here at this school, how generous everyone is to you, like the teachers really care about you. Every teacher is really open, their door is always open to you. Um, I've had in, uh, my instructors give me their personal cell phone numbers for me to call them if I need help, or they're more than just a teacher to you, they're more of a friend. I highly recommend the school to anybody who decides to go into nursing. Work eight months side by side with the same nurse at St. Luke's facility here in Ronan, Montana. And that really gave me the confidence um, and the practice that I needed to bring my skills to the table when I graduate here um, in June. So um, definitely gave me uh, more hands-on experience than you normally get at the um, traditional clinical model. The program was set up to provide our communities with more Indian nurses. So the population in the classes are about half and half. It offers to students the opportunity to come in at an entry level uh, registered nurse, which uh, some programs are called associate degree or associate diploma nurses. And so um, that gives them a chance to be able to build on their skills and go on if they'd like to a bachelor's or master's level. Um, as being an SKC graduate myself, um, one of the things that inspired me about coming to SKC was the fact that I could come and get a quality education in approximately two years and be able to take and move about in, especially in Montana communities and provide service. And so with myself, my plan was always to come back and teach. I would encourage students to come here for the reasons that, number one, you're not a number like at the university level. And the fact is, is that the staff is very open to helping you out with whatever problems. They may be sometimes family problems, financial problems, maybe even having to do with maybe why they're not understanding that something that was taught in a lecture. Um, so the staff, I would have to say, is very accessible. And I'm going to use the word accommodating because of the fact is, is the success of the students is the success of the college. For job employment, uh, the instructors work one-on-one -on -one with you. They're very hands-on. Um, clinic here, we work with the kicking horse student patients. They come and we actually work with the, dental, the dentist and he helps us um, motivate ourselves. The instructors, the dentists, the students, your peers help you a lot tremendously. Um, you practice with each other, you learn from each other, and um, having the open lab and clinics to practice more, motivating yourself to teach yourself. We're one of few uh, programs across the nation that offers an on-site working dental clinic and which gives our students a lot of hands-on experience so that they're more prepared to to head into the field of dental assisting. Most of our students actually leave with jobs sometimes before they even leave. The nice thing about our clinic or about our program is that we offer an on-site dental working clinic that our students get about 150 hours of clinical experience and then they have to do, um, if they graduate with a certificate of completion, a 300 or more hours of externship, it's called, which they go into a dental office and work. So most of our students are offered jobs or have a job waiting when they leave our program. Instructors show real world problems, um, like setting up a network, troubleshooting it. So I had two different jobs in the IT department already. And my job uh, is going to last till I get my bachelor's in a couple more years. The instructors help out because it's like such small numbers in the class where they can be right there one on one with you, helping you when you have a problem. Our program offers students the opportunity to um, acquire a position in IT, information technology, in many different areas out there in the real world immediately after graduation. We have an AS and a BS degree, and both degrees prepare students for the industry standard certifications in Linux, uh, Cisco, Microsoft, and the CompTIA, which is an upgrade and repair type certification. We prepare them for it. We don't require it. 
routers and switches, the equipment and the devices that uh, that they can put together in a real life situation as if they were on the job. And then we also require uh, a practicum, which is non-paid, 90 hours the first two years in real life on the job training, and another 90 hours in the second two years on an internship, hopefully paid. After the AS degree, they could acquire an entry-level position in help desk, um, computer technician, and um, even a network analyst. Um, those are great positions to be able to be entry level right off the bat. I chose to come to Salish Kootenai College because it is a tribal college and because of the well-known highway construction training program. Every day you're practicing driving, um, learning how to run the stick, uh, backing up. Um, the heavy equipment, you get a lot of hours of just get, getting on and getting used to the the machinery. We had to know how to operate these before we could get out and work the actual equipment just for safety reasons and to know what we were doing and once we got out there it was pretty easy from learning from these and driving the simulator for the um, semi and from there just every day we were out working and getting the feel of working the equipment and then now we're doing our own projects. A lot of the other programs are, are trying to train on simulators and simulators have a place mm -hmm. but it's, uh, it's our ability to train on, on a, our extensive fleet of equipment that really makes the, you know, really sets our program apart I think. It's, it's close to two million dollars. It's not the newest, uh, you know, state-of-the-art equipment which can be you know, three hundred thousand dollars for just a single a single item, but we've got the depth. We've got half a dozen uh, loader backhoes. We've got track excavators. We've got four or five motor graders. We've got half a dozen front end loaders. When our students go out into the field, every student is on a has their own piece of equipment. Uh, we've got compactors, scrapers. Uh, we've got everything, all the equipment that matches what a contractor uses on the jobs. Uh, the basic credentials that we offer, the Class A commercial driver's license, uh, our students also receive a, a tank endorsement, a double triple trailer endorsement, and just in the last two years we've been able to add a, the hazmat endorsement, which is uh, uh, very valuable, especially with the, the work that is available now in the, in North Dakota. All requires all requires the hazmat. Uh, in the last several years, we've also added a 10-hour OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration training. Very responsive to the to the needs of industry, and that's helped keep our students in in uh, high demand and have good placement success in the construction business. We've got uh, a wide range of students uh, from 18 to late 50s. We generally run around 20 percent, 10 to 20 percent uh, female and I've got to say some of our most successful graduates have been female. They, they have, uh, uh, some of them demonstrate a real uh, willingness to, to change their lives for the better and, and uh, their attendance and attitude, punctuality is just, is just superlative. What I saw, um, I liked what I heard and then and I got a tour here and I like I really liked it so I decided to come here. We believe that students learn best by being able to take the information that they learn in their courses and apply it in their direct work with children and families. So for every course that we have we also have a, an accompanying practicum or lab experience that the students do so that they can transfer the skills learned in the class to their work with kids and families. And it's just nice that you see your instructors or other instructors that you have out of your major or your department and they know your name and they say hi and everybody's really friendly. Employment opportunities for students who graduate in early childhood education are typically teaching positions. So at the associate degree level they are qualified to be um, teacher aides 
Um, they're qualified to be child care center teachers and also they can open their own family child care home. It's a wonderful feeling when you're like showing them something, you know, and you work hard at it and they're working hard at it and then they do it like a simple thing as tying their shoe, you know. You just don't take that, you take it for granted, but it's a big deal to like a little child. Students who want to teach in kindergarten, first or second grade um, we'll have to do an elementary ed program because that's the degree program that's tied to licensure for public school teaching. The nice thing about our early childhood program though are for those students who want to work with the kindergarten, first and second grade population, our early childhood program was approved by the Montana Board of Public Education so that students can get an early childhood specialized permissive competency in early childhood and they, that's noted on their teaching license in elementary. So they go through the elementary ed program, they also do our early childhood coursework and then on their teaching license it says elementary curriculum but it also has that special endorsement for early childhood. I love the atmosphere here on SKC and uh, the, the community that is created by all of the uh, um, opportunities, you know, to get involved in, in different things and um, the, the staff is very supportive and that has been an asset for me. Our Associate of Science degree in elementary ed prepares students who want to be paraprofessionals or teacher aid in public schools and our elementary Bachelor of Science program um, was approved so that we can refer students who graduate with a Bachelor of Science in elementary ed to the state for full elementary education licensure. With the, the technology skills that I'm getting here, I mean everything is working together to create a well-rounded basis for being a teacher. So our um, our elementary education program has 540 hours of um, practicum hours um, and that's throughout the whole four years of, of their um, bachelor's degree program. A lot of the practicum work starts early in their, in their program in the first and second years and the reason for that is this is the time when students often find out if teaching is the degree that they want to pursue. I would say that what I've used the most is the scholarship programs. Um, I've come in, I've used the tutoring, I've used uh, the work-study program, um, but I would say more, more than anything it, was the, it would be scholarships. Um, I also uh, had a chance to use the CUDER program. The Career Center houses the scholarship program. Um, we advertise a lot of those opportunities through Facebook, um, through student email accounts, and on a bulletin board. A student just needs to come in and pick up an application or we have them available on the website and all of our lab computers. CUDER is the Career Assessment Planning System and it will help a student determine if they're on the correct career path based on their skills, abilities, and interests. If a student determines that they need tutoring right away, we ask that they come see us as soon as possible. Um, they just need to come in, see Terry at the front, front desk and pick up an application and we'll set them up with somebody who can work within their time schedule. We have a very caring career services staff um, that will go the extra mile to help students. I'm guessing over three years, somewhere between ten dollars to $15,000 in scholarships that were 100% aided by the Career Center. I mean, without them helping me step by step, um, I wouldn't have gotten them, I don't think. Thank <laughs> you.